G'day, welcome to another episode of Budget Off-Road Touring. So in today's video, we're going to be installing a Sanhema Universal Tub Rack onto the D-Max, thanks to the legends of Vic Off-Road. So in today's video, we're just going to do a step-by-step -step install. Um, being universal, it's going to work on any setup, whether it's a single cab, dual cab, extra cab ute, doesn't matter what the rig is, and we'll give a review in a later video. So, I hope you guys enjoy. So we've just opened up the box and as you can see there's a fair few arms and brackets and bits and pieces. A lovely big bag of nuts and bolts which will be very fun to sort through. Um, obviously your instructions and this is the rebar I guess for the top um, which is pretty cool. It's got the two lights which we're going to replace the little light bar that we've already got hanging off the sports bar. Um, and then the trim that says sand hammer on it, the nice little red backing. That looks pretty cool. So yeah, let's go through and start putting this thing together. So the first step before we can install the tub rack is obviously remove the sports bars. So as much as we've loved it as part of our setup, it's gonna have to go. The light bar itself will go as well, but the wiring's already there, so we'll keep that to make life easier for the lights on the tub rack. So step one, unbolting this, move the wiring out of the way. We're gonna hope, hopefully leave uh, these brackets for the tourniquet cover on. We're planning on having the tourniquet cover sit underneath the tub rack to give a little bit of privacy to what's back here or uh, keep the water off it a little bit. Not that the setup was waterproof anyway, but yeah, try and minimize how much water gets back here. But we'll see how we go. So that may or may not change throughout this video. But yeah, so if you don't have a sports bar, well, we're now finished this bit, so pointless skipping. But, let's get started. So as you can see, the sports bar is just held in by, um, I don't stuck, but just by a couple of hex bolts. So that's why it's not really recommended that you tie things off these. Um, they're great for looks and little accessories like the light bar, but yeah. Could strap to them, but it's not really recommended. And this is where the tub rack is going to make our different storage options a lot more versatile. Now we've taken off the sports bar, so it looks pretty naked back here. But uh, now we're starting to assemble the tub rack. So the first step was to figure out the height that we needed for the tub rack to sit. And currently we're going to make it sit flush with the roof. So if we were to ever get a roof um, rooftop tent, we'd be able to drop it down and work with it from there. But for now, uh, we think having it the height of the roof is beneficial so we can have stuff sitting flat on top and then we have more room from the base of the tub to the top. So yeah. so. Four of the hex screws on either side. Well, that says two. <laughs> That's two for now. But four on each side, and then um, we'll see what the next step is. So what we're doing now is basically trying to get the width right for the car. Um, you could probably measure it, but we'll go with trial and error. Um, so probably best to start with two bolts, one on each side. Um, obviously, still with the washer on each side. Um, that way, if you get it wrong, it's not too much you got to undo. So, and there is a, a bit of play, not on that one, because that's now on full thing, but there's a bit of play between each, because you've got the the channels on the butt, on the top bar, and then the corners are just holes, so you can adjust, you can adjust which hole it goes into to get, get your width. Obviously line them up so they're going to be the same on both sides. So as you can see we're a touch short. Um, but yeah, so just a quick little readjustment. We'll go on what we did on the other side. We'll go back uh, one hole and see how that goes and then get it right. No. Um, so now that we know we've got the measurement right, we're just going to add the extra two bolts on each side. 
um, just to save us doing it later. The instructions do suggest doing focusing just on the one side and then doing the other side at the end. But yeah, I guess as long as they're all done, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and yeah, so if you've got a D Max to get it right, save you the hassle. It's one bolt on the edge, exposed here, and then use these two pretty much at full length, and that's the width of a D Max tub. The next step was to actually mount the overarching bits of the tub rack. Um, so it's two bolts on the side, one bolt going in horizontally. But the way the D-Max tub is at the front here, it's a bit solid. Um, well, there's a solid piece. Um, so where we drilled the holes in, we realized we can't actually get a nut in from the other side to actually fasten it down. So what we're doing is we're putting some nut certs in. Um, that way it's, we've got a thread that we can work with, still want to be secure, um, and we don't have to try and wiggle our way around the solid bit to tighten it up. But yeah, so that's what we're doing now. We're just throwing this in, and then it should be a lot easier to work with. So once the front of the tub rack had been installed, the next step is to measure your distance for the rear of the rack. To do this, we place one of the side rails on each side to then mark our distance on the tub, take them all off, and then we could drill our holes. So we've secured all of all of the arms, I guess, um, to the actual tub of the D-Max. There's a fair few little bits and brackets inside the tub itself which makes putting these bolts in a little bit difficult. I'm not sure what other tubs are sort of like. Um, so we did use an extra nut cert here and then on the same one on that side. Uh, these ones have just gone in with a nut and bolt. They're why they're still a little bit visible, but that doesn't really bother us. Um, you could get shorter bolts if you wanted that more cleaner, slick look. But yeah, so now what we're gonna do is we just gotta decide how, I guess, high we want everything to be. Um, start to tighten these up and then we can get the crossbars in and start working on the roof as well. Each of the side rails as well as the top rails are mounted with four bolts, two on each side. Depending on how you choose to mount them, you possibly can also include a third bolt to sit on the front However, ours sits slightly higher, so ours is just held on by the two bolts on each side. So yesterday, as we were working on the tub rack, um, I guess we were finally on the downhill run, and a massive storm rolled through, and well, we were absolutely drenched. As much as we're under a carport here, it's yeah, rain coming from all angles, um, absolutely soaked us. So we caught it a day, started fresh this morning, um, and yeah, so, the steps now, we've got all the side rails on, we've got the roof rails on. So just now going through and doing the final tightening adjustments. I guess the only thing that we'd suggest is actually follow the instructions and don't tighten everything up as you're going through. We didn't realize that the final instruction was to go through and tighten everything and along the way it said just to leave things a bit loose. That way it makes putting each of the side bars and top bars in a lot easier. So after a bit of struggles, we finally listened to the instructions, got all the bar work in, and now just to do the final touch-ups, make sure everything's nice and tight, and then we can jump onto the electrical work and see if we can get this tourniquet cover back on as well. So for the wiring, we used a couple of crimping joiners to connect the lights back to our original wiring. We also used heat shrink, split conduit, and a 10 amp fuse for extra protection. So we just finished wiring up these lights up here, so as I said before, they were wired up off the light bar that we already had off the old sports bar. 
So the wiring itself was already there, just needed to obviously extend it to suit the lights being back here rather than up there. Um, but yeah, so those lights are connected to a switch inside the cab, but they're powered off the secondary battery back here. So that way we can use them as camp lights or double up as a reverse light if we're um, trying to back up in the dark. But yeah, so being running off the house battery, they can stay on for as long as we need them to and then still start the car the next day. Don't have to worry about any flats there. So that's the end of the tub rack itself. Now it's just trying to put that tourniquet back on if we can, hopefully we can. So make some changes to the little brackets and see how it goes. To remount the brackets for the tourniquet cover, we used a couple of pop rivets as well as some liquid nails for a little bit extra support. So obviously now because of the tub rack, the cover isn't going to shut all the way, but it still gives the back of our ute a little bit of extra privacy and protection, and it's secured probably about 95%, I guess as much as what it used to be. So that brings us to the end of our tub rack install on the back of the D-Max. So not to be biased or anything, but we think it looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a pretty fun install as well, so it gave us a good little project to do for a few days, even though online it says it might take two hours or three hours. But obviously every project that you anticipate might take a little bit longer with the problems that arise. So but definitely yeah. allow a few extra yes. hours um, play when you're doing yours. Yep. But yeah, so I guess our bit of advice when you're putting your own tub rack on is to actually follow the instructions yes. when it comes to don't tighten the bolts as you go through. Yes. We decided that we'd tighten everything as we progressed and when it comes time to do the side the side rails, it gave us nothing but challenges. Yeah. That Having that extra bit of play in the bolts makes life a lot easier. So go through, tighten them all right at the end. That also then gives you peace of mind to make sure everything is extra tight once it's all put together yeah. yeah exactly but yeah as obvious as that is read the instructions so now that we've got the tub rack all installed um, we're going to do a review next so we'll be able to go through what the new setup is going to be now that we have the tub rack whether we're going to tie things to the side or if we're going to use the top to put things on see how sturdy this thing is but yeah so that should be next on our video list so be sure to stay tuned for our review and the new setup so I guess that brings us to the end of this tub rack install. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. It's something a little bit different for the channel. So let us know if it's something that you'd like to see more of. And yeah, so until next time, don't forget to enjoy the great outdoors.